Hey guys, this is Momo, and uh, today is a very special video that you guys are going to get to see uh, later on. Um, and uh, I got to tell you, there are no coincidences in life because you meet people, and if you pay attention to the details, like you wake up one morning and you think that one thing means one thing and one thing leads to another, as a group once said. And then, you know, if you follow the breadcrumbs, all of a sudden something happens. So what's happened here is, you know, my friend Ralph May, so he's sitting here with Andrew Nations. Okay. And, and I, I decided to, like, put up this picture on my on my post of me holding this guitar at a local music store. And I happened to mention a story that happened to me when I was 14 when I met Bo Diddley. And he opened up his guitar right there on the counter. And I, 14 year old, going to buy my first Flying V. And I look into this guy's guitar case and I say, Man, what an ugly looking guitar. You know, and uh, <clears throat> here I am talking to Bo Diddley that way. And he loved that guitar. And he told me she was beautiful uh, and, and that he loved her. And, um, you know, needless to say, I'm embarrassed today. He became a fan of the guitar and the guy probably like a couple of weeks later and uh here we are so uh, ralph uh answers that message by saying that bo diddley lived not too far away from where he lives yeah and then we got our friend andrew over here who happens to he was going to answer the same thing and he winds up looking at ralph's profile picture only to see a rickenbacker that as he zoomed in a little closer, realized, man, I think this is my Rickenbacker that I pawned years ago. And and then the beat goes on from there. So so and then Ralph, who's been a friend of mine on Facebook for a very long time, being the kind man that he is, just reaches out and says, Hey man, I'm gonna give you back your base. And 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 an exchange went down, and we are here today to find out how everything matters when you follow the breadcrumbs. Okay, let's talk about this story, guys. How did this go down? Sounds good. He's been sitting here playing the hell out of his rick. He's got it right here hooked up. How does it feel, dude? How does it feel to have an old friend back in your in your possession? Man, I never thought I would see this thing again. Yeah, this, like, I pawned this, like, I came on hard times 10 years ago now and took this to a pawn shop and... Anybody who knows anything about Ricks know that, like, 2000 and under, not going to happen. I pawned this Rick for $300 because I wanted to go oh. that month and get it back. And things happened the way they did, and I never got to get back over there. And, well, things happened, and the base was gone. And I was like, well, that's that's the one that got away, you know. Like, everybody's got that girl that got away, you know. This was that yeah. base for me. And lo and behold, like you said, like, um, we're talking about Bo Diddley, and I, I see this man, and I'm like, well, he, that's a small world. He lives right down the road from me, and we're talking about Bo Diddley, and I get to looking at his profile picture, and wow, it's an even smaller world because that looks a lot like my base, and sure enough, it is. <laughs> yeah, that's it. It's never been, the only thing I did to it was change the strings on it. That's yeah, it, it. It's literally just as I left it with a new set of strings. Like, it's been in a time capsule, basically. That is that is mind-blowing. You know what I mean? To I know how important the special guitars are to people. You, you're only going to have that one guitar that you always loved, and this is his, and I was just keeping it for him. <laughs> and it came, there's no such thing as this was meant to be. So. That is such an amazing, I mean, as you said that, I mean, I got goosebumps like happening. What an awesome story to get back that base, especially, you know, going back 10 years, right? So 10 years ago, that, that would have made you how old, if you don't mind me asking? Yeah, about 22 back then, yeah. Okay, so there you are in your very, very early 20s. I know what it feels like in your early 20s when you have a base that you enjoy and, and, and you get rid of it. Lord knows I've got at least five or six regrets in my life but those regrets always turned into something absolutely amazing and there's always an amazing story that goes along with it you know and that's right to be able to have such a fantastic story of a guy who fucking lives practically up the street from you 
10 years later holding the time capsule. And, and, and you know, I got to tell you, I've had many conversations with Ruff about that base. May as well be halfway around the world from us. And I found this guy that's yeah. practically my neighbor. Yeah. We're 45 miles apart. And if you hadn't said something about Bo Dilly, we never would have said a word. <laughs> You got you got to admit, right? I, I was telling Ralph that um, I was very close to not putting that story down because I had finished writing what I was going to write, and at the very end, I said, "Yeah, the Bo Diddley thing popped up in my head," and and I put it down, and 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 Creela was actually typing it out for me, and, and she said, "Well, maybe you shouldn't put that because it's it's too long." I said, "No, no, no, that needs to be in there." So the fact that you know that. It went on like that yeah. and connected this whole situation. I'm so, so happy that such an old story and a, and a beautiful friend like this, long distance, through the power of the fucking internet, well, yeah. makes this kind of music happen because this is a very musical connection, man. Wow, the, the, Bo Diddley, my work. man, you made this happen. <laughs> yeah, the Momo Zone worked, didn't it? I really do believe in this kind of connection. And I think it takes like certain kinds of people, right? Yeah. In order to make connections like this happen, right? Like, like, uh, honestly, I know from what I know of you and the conversations I've had with you, if we live next to each other, we would be awesome friends. Oh yeah. You, your values, the way you think, who you are as a human being, everything you believe in completely resonates with who I am as a human and my life with Quila. And I believe that Andrew is the same way. Otherwise, you would not be attracted to a person like that uh, to have that kind of connection. And through this screen, yeah, I can virtually feel the energy that you have, uh, Andrew. And you are a very, very nice person. And I, I think amazing things are going to happen. When shit like this happens, right, you cannot... I, I, and I, I'm taking for granted it's not a word because I know you don't... Um, you have to use that as a keyhole to an opening for way more things to come that live in this kind of opportunistic direction, right? Because people think, oh, shit will never happen to me. Or, I've prayed and uh, it never came. I've wished and it never happened. You know what I mean? This is fucking bullshit. The unknown, right, Yeah, is the most powerful set of gifts that one will get. The things you can't see, the things you don't know are there yet, all that shit is the shit we are looking for. It don't happen. At, like when I you get know. older, you know what I mean? Like yeah. when you get older, what happens, it's not about everything you need and want. It's about everything you don't want anymore so that you're left with what you really need. When you're younger, you, I need this. If only I had that, I would be able to do this. But without that, I could not do this. You know what I mean? Uh, right. I feel you have that in you that like this is a keyhole, a key that's been given that will open up and is tied to many more things like this in different departments of your life. I'm fucking telling you. I got I got to say, like the last, just in the last month, I forget. I was talking to one of my friends, and I was telling we were talking about this base, and I was telling him, "Look, I will see this base again before I pass it." Oh, oh, here I am, man. You got it back. I, I have not forgot about this. <laughs> like, I'm having a pinch me moment right now. Like, yeah. I've had people offer me $1,500, $2,000 for it, and I wouldn't take it. I just like, I'm going to keep it. <laughs> what else can you say? What else can you can, can you tell us about manifestation, Andrew? Man, uh, I don't know. Like, this is, like I said, it's just one of them things. Like, I knew it would happen. Like, it was... I knew the likelihood of it happening was like so low and like whoever had, like I, I thought that whoever had this was either a enjoying it to the point where it was theirs forever or B it was in a million pieces somewhere. And luckily neither of, well, I'm sure he enjoyed it. Yeah. Like, luckily, I mean, it's back here. So it I'm, came, it came home. I'm glad it was loved. Oh yeah. And, like, and what made you, so you went onto his profile picture because it's it, it's pretty small, right? I guess what you like kind of zoomed in on that, and, and you you saw the little scratch, and you realized, wait a minute, oh well, yeah, how many? Probably, what are the chances? Well, anytime I see a Rickenbacker, I get interested, and I, like I saw, I could tell that it was a Rickenbacker on the little circle, and when I zoomed in, I saw 
I don't know if you see it on the video, but this little scratch right here and this yep. volume knob doesn't have a uh, sticker on it. And that's when I was like, yeah, I used to have like, I just had a mini heart attack because that looks <laughs> just like the one I had, except mine was an 83. And at that time he went and ran the number and turns out his was the 83. They told me it was a 74 when I picked it up. And I'm thinking, who in the hell is going to sell a 74 Rick for $750? Right. They didn't know what they had. I jumped on it. And, and you guys didn't know each other. You know, no, no, no. Like I just, <laughs> yeah. And then after you and I talked on the podcast, I went and ran the number on this thing, and they come back. What's the eighty-three model? So, I mean, they it's part of oh, man. Part. Uh, that is fucking brutal in the best way. I cannot tell you how happy I am. So, people, let it be said. Follow the breadcrumbs yeah. of your dreams. Be cool with the people around you. There are so many yeah. great people out there, and, and music comes in very many different forms. It's not always just about playing an instrument, some scales, and some chords, and writing a song. It's got to do with the harmony of people getting together and doing the right thing and doing what they consider will just make that vibrational situation turn into some kind of harmonious fucking structure. And ladies and gentlemen, this is what we have going on right here with my buddy Ralph May and Andrew Nations, who uh, who I just met and is an awesome dude, a Rickenbacker lover. He's got his baby back 10 years later. And uh, wow, so cool. This was supposed to happen. We just, it just, we didn't know it. Neither one of us knew it, but it happened. Good times. Well, guys, the power of manifestation strikes again. Yes, it does. May it happen to all of you. Believe in the unknown, because this is where the magic of the life and riff lives. We've been hanging out with my buddy Ralph May and my new buddy. Andrew Nation. That is a great name, by the way. That's your real name? Yes, that's me. Yeah. Damn, that's a good name. That's that's such a cool fucking name that it sounds like you made it up. <laughs> Thank you for being in my life, Ralph. You are you are you are a really cool guy, yeah. and uh, you make me happy whenever I see you pop up and say anything. And he's a special one, Andrew. Oh yeah. No. Don't take me long. He's a special man. I I've I've rarely met. That you know, you will get to meet a handful of of people in your life that are instrumental <laughs> in 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 making things happen in ways that you could have never calculated. I think you know everybody would have let this go down the way it did today. Yeah. Okay, guys, it's it's a fucking honor. Congratulations <laughs> on getting your bass back. Um, <laughs> no words. <laughs>